it's not just people on site who are making decisions anymore. Correct. Uh, people off site are making decisions. Uh, so in order for that to happen, they need to be able to access data. Yes. So how does the data get from on site to someone in, uh, in an office uh, with SmartPad? Okay. There's a few different ways. So one, it's the middle of the night. You get a phone call from your frat crew that says, uh, hey, yeah, pressure's coming up on us. It's two in the morning. You're tired, but you're on call. I've been there yeah. both as a completions engineer and as a drilling engineer. The difference is as a drilling engineer, when you had pace on, I could pull up pace on and I could be looking at it and I could see the data live. Yeah. <laughs> and it's easier for me to make an engineering decision to help them. When you're in the frack world, um, if they're calling you because they have an issue, I'm just like, okay, well, like what? what's been going on. Like I'm, I'm having to spend a lot of time getting textual information from them. So I think one of the big first advantages is it's two in the morning. Well, you can roll over and look at smart pad on your mobile phone and you can see what frack has been doing for the past 15 minutes. And that alone is enabling you to make a real time decision that I don't think you've previously had. Now it's your, it's your average day to day. Right. And I just want to have a look at my data. Um, one of my favorite things about cold bore is we are so concerned about data accessibility. Yep. So there's three ways you can get data from us. You can stream live data over WebSocket. What that basically means is as we get live data, we push it, right? So that it's a very um, passive for the operator way to acquire data. As okay. we get new data, we just send it yep. to you over WebSocket. Easy. The second way, the probably the most popular way people get data right now is over what's called an API, okay. which is an application programming interface. And I think the best analogy I've ever heard for an API is an API is a waiter. So I'm sitting at a restaurant yep. and I tell my waiter, hey, I want a number five with uh, no onions. I gave them very specific criteria. I told them what I wanted. Yep. They run back to the kitchen they get a number five with no onions and they bring it back to me. So the waiter both taking my request to the kitchen yep. and bringing my food to me, that is an API. So it doesn't matter what the kitchen looks like. I never have to know what the kitchen looks like. Yep. I just told them the information that I wanted and they brought it back to me. So that's what an API is. Okay. Just a really straightforward way for you to communicate with any company and say, hey, I want this information. These are the details you need to get me what I want. And then you send it back. So it's really easy. Yeah. The other thing I love about cold bore is that we provide snowflake. Okay. I have been hearing about this. So describe, because this is into the data warehousing conversation, yes. right? So snowflake's a data warehouse. And the difference there is, let's say I'm going to go to a restaurant and I'm going to get a three course meal. So right now I tell my waiter, I want calamari for my appetizer. I want a burger for my entree and I want tiramisu for dessert. Okay. He takes those three requests and he will bring them back to me. A data warehouse is more like you show up at a fancy restaurant and there's a chef curated menu. And so it says, well, I know that, you know, uh, nachos and enchiladas and, um, you know, flan, those three are great together. Yeah. And so I'm going to make that menu available to you. And so the difference there is instead of me having to read API documentation mm -hmm. and me as a data scientist or as an IT person or a very tech savvy completions engineer, send all these individual requests and say, hey, I want this piece of data. Hey, I want this piece of data. Hey, I want this piece of data. With the data warehouse, we just serve up the data and say, hey, this is a really intuitive way to have all the data put together. Um, you don't even have to think about it. You can just straight pull, you know, all your stage summary data put together. You don't have to ping us and say, hey, I want the average treating pressure for this stage. Hey, I want the average rate for this other stage. We just say, hey, I know you're going to want yep. all of the rates and pressures for all the stages. And so we just serve that up to you in an immediately usable data set. So to me, in a way, this seems like um, if you're working with uh, customers and as you spend more time working with customers and understanding uh, how they want to use the data, how they're deriving value from it, 
does this help you identify that these are the things that go well together? This is the information yes. that people are looking for and you can build that into the system exactly, and allow people to get exactly what they need. But it's like all of these other companies are doing all these amazing things. So you can bring that to customers. Exactly. And we know that a lot of times the bottleneck for our clients is getting some time from their data science team or getting some time for their IT team to re-engineer these huge data sets so that they can do whatever they want with it. We know that that's a bottleneck for customers. Yeah. And so we just eliminated that. And we said, we will just host a beautiful data warehouse for you so that a completions engineer can literally log in with a username and a password. They can see the table and they can just download it. There's direct connects into you know your Power BI's, your Spotfire, they all have direct connects into Snowflake. And so what we've done is we've really reduced the barrier for your average completions engineer who doesn't know how to write one line of code to get beautiful, clean, easy access to the data they need to make a more efficient decision tomorrow. So how many uh, how many completions engineers actually have coding uh, experience and background? Like, is that a normal common thing or is that unique? It's increasing for sure, which like I... Uh, as someone who has both of those really enjoy. And it's like been really cool to see the oil and gas industry embrace, like we should be more tech savvy. Like if you're going to know any other language, I always say the best language to know is a coding language. Right. Yep. Um, and so you definitely, you're seeing an increase in it. You're seeing people realize like this is, would be really, really beneficial for me. But, uh, I, I think it's even better for us on the tech side to just enable the data right to them and they can they don't focus. have to be a software engineer. They no. don't have to know how to do that. They can actually just focus on doing their job really well, as opposed to learning how to interface with Ex all of the data. Exactly. So let's superpower them by meeting them where they're at, which is maybe they don't like coding. Maybe it's not their main skill set, and let's allow them to use their years of knowledge of completions to make a better decision tomorrow instead of trying to spend their time learning to code so that they can wrangle data so that they can make a better decision. Let's just shortcut that. If you uh, could go back in time and tell yourself as a completions engineer about cold bore and what the future would look like, what would, what would Danica, the completions engineer, think about this whole uh, value proposition? Well, when I was a completions engineer, I wanted to use cold bore. <laughs> uh, they were just kind of coming on the market. And then when I transitioned to the data science department and I would get these requests to wrangle these data sets and people would want all this information. You have an SVP being like, man, I really, really want to know this metric. And you're like that. I just don't have that data where I want. Right. Um, the, the further I got into the data science world, I think the more I realized how imperative it is for operators to be partnering with tech companies instead of everybody trying to develop their own internal solution because we get economies of scale yep. by being cold bore. And that value that we get from that goes back directly to all of our customers. Instead of having every single operator try to, you know, build their own database and their own algorithms and all this stuff. It just makes way more sense to partner with us and have beautiful, clean agnostic data than everybody try to develop it themselves. So I think the pitch is clear for cold board. It's stop spending your time being a data aggregator, a human data aggregator, and let's start spending your time being a human decision maker with good data. Hey, last question. So let's say if someone is a completions engineer currently and they're watching this and they would be interested in learning more, but they don't want to talk to a salesperson. Is there opportunities to learn more about cold bore and smart pad and everything without having to talk to the sales guys? Cause just sometimes it just, you know, we're not ready for that level of commitment. We just need more information. Yes. Uh, call me. Uh, hit me up on LinkedIn. I would prefer that we just talk during normal working hours about your data, your data hurdles, what your data goals are. Um, and that can be agnostic as well. Like as much as I believe in cold bore, I'd love to hear your individual problems and make sure that we're going to help you achieve your goals. And it's probably fair that if they're having a problem, someone else that you've worked with probably has yes. had similar problems and allows you to leverage that experience Absolutely. to help that. Absolutely.